Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I am having a look at making images move. I know, it can take a single image and magically transform it into something like this. How, you may be wondering? Well, the answer is Thin Plate Spline Motion Model for Image Animation. Ooh, I know, right? Should we get into it? Yes. Okay, let's have a little look at this GitHub page. So, here it is, the Thin Plate Spline Motion Model GitHub. We'll scroll down and have a little look at the example pictures, because we all love example pictures, don't we? There we go. So there we got a driving video and a driving video for TED Talks as well. This is the Vox dataset. And as you can see, it's doing a very good job of animating those static images. And uh, you can also notice as well that the background isn't moving. If you played with the first order motion model for image animation, you might have noticed the, the background kind of going along with things as well. And yeah, this seems to do a, a very good job of uh, just moving the foreground bit. So yeah, okay. Now, lots and lots of different ways to run this. As you can see here, we've got, uh, it's integrated into Hugging Face Spaces. Yeah, so you can, you can click on that, go over to Hugging Face. Uh, there is also a web demo for animation there and also Google Colab. So if you don't have your own GPU, just open it up in Colab and you're away. There are some pre-trained models, so you can download those. If you pop over to the Google Drive, for example, and you can right click and you can download and, and yeah, save those into your checkpoints directory. Then you've got all the pre-trained models. There is information lower down on how to train your own models as well so don't worry you can do whatever you fancy and then it is on to the installation so let's have a quick look at my environment so if you are following along then uh, if you've got exactly the same environment as me it will be exactly the same if you're using another operating system such as microsoft windows then there may be a few changes obviously you will know what they are because you're using a different operating system so ubuntu 2004 is my one and I am using an NVIDIA GPU with the NVIDIA drivers and CUDA Toolkit 11.7 installed. I am also using Anaconda to give me my new virtual Python environments. You will want to create a new one, and I have created one called Thin Plate Spline. I'm using Python 3.9. Once you've created your new environment, you will, of course, want to activate it. So I'm going to do that right now. There we go. I have Conda activated Thin plate spline i'm in my new environment excellent you will then of course want to git clone this so you download the code and then change directory into there so there i am changing directory into my thin plate spine motion model directory and you can just use all the defaults pip install minus r requirements.txt there you go and everything is installed for you now i of course have done things ever so slightly differently because i'm weird like that i used the very latest version of PyTorch, the uh, the one with CUDA 11.6, uh, which did mean that I had to make a couple of tiny changes to requirements.txt. Basically, I just took out Torch Vision and Torch and upped the Pillow version to 9.2, and that got me running with all the latest stuff. And there you go, that's it. You've got it installed and you're ready to start running. So you can you can just do the example that they've got there. Let's just pop that in. There we go copy pasta that in and that is the example that they have got down here so training we don't need to do that because i have downloaded the pre-trained checkpoints already there is the demo now it's ever so slightly different from the uh, the, the line there you can do you can do the copy pasta but if you noticed it doesn't include the assets directory and that is where you have a look at assets over here that is where all those bits and bobs actually are so the source.jpg is actually in assets and the driving video is also in assets as well as you can see I've, I've put a couple of my own assets in there too yeah yeah anyway so once you've run that command you will get result.mp4 and there it is there we go we've got a result so yep driving video on that example source image so that's fantastic isn't it yes yes all right let's have a look at a few other options so you've got find best frame now this this tends to make things a little bit video uh, better uh, video wise and uh, you've also got result video, which you can change. Uh, that will change the output name. Image shape, so if you're using the TED Talk one, you might want to use 384 by 384, as the default is 256 by 256. And there are also three modes in this. You've got relative, which is the default, uh, standard, and AVD. So feel free to play with those and see what is best for your particular experience. So let's just do another one here. So this is one with find best frame using my own custom assets. So there I'm using assets face 195. So if we have a quick look at that, there is face 195. So that is the source 
image that I'm going to be using. And of course, I'm using my own custom driving video. That's that's the one that you saw at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So now, as you can see down here, this does take a little bit longer if you use find best frame. So basically it goes through and it will try and find the best frame first and then it will render the video. So I'll just speed time up a little bit here. So we jump straight to the video creation. OK, there we are. We've got the video. So let's have a look at that. There is the result video. That's a little bit of animation going along there. But as, as you can probably hear or not, there is no sound. There is no sound, but it's easy enough just to add the sound back in from your driving video with this command right here. So basically take the result and add the video intro there. That's the one I used from the assets and I'm just copying the audio in. So then there we go. Hello and welcome yeah, to with audio Nerdy Geekery. Today I am having a look at yeah, making anyway, let's, let's stop that now. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there you go. Um, now you might want to upscale that as well, because obviously that comes out at 256 by 256. And the one I would recommend is GFP GAN. I have already done a video on this, but this is very good at restoring faces. So it makes it a little bit less grainy and you can also upscale it as well at the same time. So there's a little example of GFP GAN in use. But there, there we go. That's that's a, that's it. That's it. Pretty much. It's almost the same as first order motion model for image animation, but it's a lot better. Thin plate spline motion model. Yeah. Okay. Go and have fun with that. Make some memes. Rodent's out for now.